day! I'm Dr. T and welcome to my office. Uh, so today I'd like to talk about describing motion. Uh, so when we describe motion, uh, this is all going to be very intuitive. We are used to doing this on a regular basis. Uh, so obviously kind of the, the basic foundation is, well, where is the stuff? So, you know, if I have a thing and it's here and then it's now here, then obviously it moves. Uh, so my first point of reference will be position. Now, I can look at the change of position and like, okay, so it did this. Well, the next logical thing to ask is, well, how quickly did it change the position? Uh, so in that case, I need to figure out how much it changed its position, uh, which is what we call delta. Whenever you see the Greek letter delta invoked, uh, it's almost always, there are a couple exceptions, but almost always saying take the final and subtract the initial look for the gap between the two. So we're going to take the change in position, delta P, and divide that by uh, the time. How long did it take to go from one spot to the other? And that gives us uh, speed. And you're used to this, you know, you're thinking miles per hour. It's like, okay, so how many miles did you get for driving an hour? Uh, or, you know, scale that down a little bit, because you usually don't do it on, you know, the whole hour. Uh, now, as uh, scientists, we typically don't work with speed as much. That's what we call a scalar quantity. Uh, that has a magnitude, so that has a number, how fast you're moving, uh, but doesn't describe things like direction. Uh, typically, we use velocity, uh, which is describing which way we are going. And this can be fairly helpful for us uh, because you can start to break down your speed into different components, and that can be fairly helpful. Okay, so you're going to notice in the next few videos, I'm going to be using this graphic of a cannon. So it'll be you know, over there somewhere. And uh, this one, you know, I want to explain a few ideas with this one, you know, different ways of displaying it and just kind of keep a nice theme. So uh, with our cannon, it's shooting a cannonball. It's kind of lobbing it over someplace. And we're looking at the cannonball and I put in some arrows. These arrows are what we call vectors. Uh, vectors are something that has magnitude and direction or orientation. Uh, kind of like the uh, villain in Despicable Me. <laughs> Anyways, so in this one I've color coded them. The black vectors are velocity. So I'm showing how fast the cannonball is going and in which way the cannonball is going. Because when it's first fired it's going, you know, up and over and then eventually once it reaches the top, you know, gravity's pulling on it so it's going to slow down. Uh, this one, I'm assuming there's no air. Obviously, that's not a valid assumption. Uh, a lot of what we're going to do is kind of simplify things because factoring in the air is really complicated. So we're going to do the simple stuff first and then later move on to the more complicated stuff or, you know, maybe not. <laughs> Just deal with the simple stuff. Okay, uh, so now we can look at that and you notice how the, the arrow shrinks and it changes direction. And that's, you know, relative to the uh, how the cannonball would be doing. And once it gets towards the top, it's going to start speeding back up again as it falls back down. Now that's your black arrows. Uh, you'll notice, though, there are some red arrows and they're kind of forming a triangle with those black arrows. When we're talking about vectors, it's sometimes helpful to split them apart. So I could say that black arrow is really two different velocities, a horizontal velocity and a vertical velocity. So at the start of my cannonball's tra uh, trip, then it's going to be going up and over, and gravity is going to be pulling down on it, and so it's going to be slowing down. But that's not going to slow down how fast it's going horizontally. Air resistance would, but we're assuming this is like on the moon or something, and there's no air. So that one's not changing. So now I'm looking at my velocity. The upwards velocity is changing. And notice how that red arrow going up as you go across is getting smaller and smaller to the point where you're at the top. It's, it's imperceptible. Uh, the, the upwards red arrow is gone. You only have the horizontal red arrow. And that horizontal red arrow stay pretty much fixed. And so this is a way to look at these uh, velocities. When you have vectors, you can do math with them. Uh, so obviously if I've got two vectors that are going in at right angles, hey, I can form a right triangle, you know, good old, uh, you know, square of each side, you know, sum of the squares of each side equals the square of the hypotenuse, insert hippopotamus joke here. Um, and so I can figure out the length of that total vector. 
If I've got two vectors that are both going in the same direction, I can add them up. If I've got vectors that are going against each other, uh, then I can subtract them. And actually, I can look at things like that when it comes to my next thing, which is acceleration. Acceleration, uh, you know, the thing the button on the floor of your car does, uh, that is going to be the change in velocity over time. So if you notice, uh, up until you hit a certain point, the harder you push on the button on the right-hand side of the floor of your driver's side of the car, the faster you go. But it's not just the faster you go, it's the faster you go faster. So if you put on just a little bit, you'll speed up and generally get, you know, coast up speed. But if you just slam it right from Dead Park, you're going to burn some rubber and gun it. Not recommending you do that, by the way. Please drive safely. Uh, so this is an idea of acceleration. We're taking delta V now, so no longer delta P, no longer change in position, but now talking change in velocity, and we're dividing that by time. How long does it take to get up to or change your velocity? Because, hey, we can accelerate forwards or we can accelerate backwards. Your brake, you know, the other button on the floorboard, uh, that is an accelerator as well. It's just you're accelerating down. You're, you know, you're decelerating, you're, you're accelerating in the other direction. So if we look at this one, you know, we're seeing an acceleration, uh, you know, right off the bat while it's in the barrel of the gun, uh, it's being accelerated. And then as the cannon balls up, we see the deceleration from the gravity. And what you would actually look at with the blue arrows, uh, had I drawn all of them, the sum of all the blue arrows from gravity, because the cannonball eventually, you know, stops, would uh, cancel out the vertical part of the acceleration from the cannon. So you can subtract them together. Now, of course, I didn't put in all the arrows because it would be a sea of arrows had I done that. Uh, but you get the general idea. So we can cancel out our vectors if they're going in opposite directions, uh, very much like, you know, the two on your car do. The right one, you know, is pointing forwards. The back one is effectively pointing, or the left one is effectively pointing backwards, except for the fact that, you know, you, you can't go in reverse with that one. You have to change the gear shift. Uh, so with that said, I will see you next time.